common factor, and we're also going to factor in trinomial. So let's begin with number two. Number two has a greatest common factor of m. When I factor out an m, what's left over is m minus 4. So another way of describing factoring a greatest common factor is to undistribute. We can check our answer to see if we did well by multiplying or distributing m squared and distributing to get negative 4m. Number four, number four uh, these two terms have a common factor of 2, but there's actually a greater common factor. Uh, both of those have a greatest common factor of 8. We're going to take out an 8, and we have left over 3w squared minus 2. Number 6, not only do we have a greatest common factor of 2, but we notice that both terms also have an x squared in common. Both terms have an x squared. So when we factor out a 2x squared, what's left over is x plus 5. Now we're going to begin by factoring some trinomials. To do that, I'm going to use this multiplication table. multiply 2 times 3 or 6 times 1. In order to get 5x, I'm going to use these two factors. 2 times x is 2x squared. check to see if the product of x plus 2 and x plus 3 is x squared plus 5x plus 6 by FOILing. x squared 3x plus 2x and positive 2 times positive 3. y squared, 42, y times y gives me y squared. My factors of 42 looking for a sum of 13. So 6 times y, 6y. 7 times y is 7y. So my factors for number 10 are y plus 6, y plus 7. set up my multiplication table, I need to factor out the greatest common factor, which is 2. Let's go back. Just notice that they also have a t. 
and calling it today. Here are my multiplication tables. I'm going to use the trinomial t squared minus 7t plus 12, beginning with t squared and positive 12. t times t gives me t squared. 4 times 3 gives me positive 12, but since I want a sum of negative 7, it would be negative 4 and negative 3. Negative 4t, negative 3t, equal negative 7t, and a negative 4 times a negative 3 does equal positive 12. So my factors the greatest common factor. And I notice that each of these terms has a greatest common factor of 2. So I'm looking at this trinomial to complete my multiplication table. times x is 5x, 6 times 6 is 6x, 5x and 6x is 11x. So my factors are 2x plus 5, x plus 6. Now in number 20, I'm going to show you a way that you can factor without using a multiplication table. And I notice in each of these four problems, I don't have a greatest common factor. So I don't need to take out a greatest common factor. So 
And what I'm thinking of is I'm thinking of two numbers that multiply to positive 9 but add up to positive 10. And the two numbers that I'm thinking of that multiply to positive 9 but add up to positive 10, positive 9 times positive 1. I need the two numbers to not only multiply to positive 9, but I need them to add up to negative 10. Negative 9, negative 1. Two numbers that multiply to negative 9, but add up to positive 8. Positive 9, negative 1. that multiply to negative 9 and add it to negative 8. Negative 9, positive 1. Each time I FOIL these four answers, I get these four original trinomials. Notice when I was doing some of these problems over on the right or left side of the problem, I would write down all the fact families for the last term, 40. So I would write down 1 times 40, 2 times 20, 4 times 10, 5 times 8. And that helped me in trying to find my middle term. As I looked down here, I noticed that the combination for uh, factors of 40 that give me a sum of 13 are 5 and 8. <coughs> the factors of 40 that give me a sum of negative 13 would be x minus 5 and x minus 8. Now I'm looking for factors of negative 40, negative 40, that give me a sum of positive 3. It would be positive 8 and negative 5. And the factors of negative 40 that give me a sum of negative 3 would be negative 8 Positive five. I notice again in number 24 we have another greatest common factor. We need to factor that out first. And then we're going to look at factoring this trinomial. Two numbers that multiply to negative 3 but add up to positive 2. <coughs> positive 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, but when I add positive 3x and negative 1x, it gives me positive 2x. Number 26, we have a review problem from the maximizing area in Chapter 12. And in this particular scenario, uh, we are going to build a yard, a rectangular yard, using 20 feet of fencing. So it says to let x, let x be the width of the fence. So we'll have an x here and an x here. So if I have 20 feet total of fencing, 20 feet total, I'm going to subtract 1x, 2x's. Now what's left over here? All of this left over needs to be divided equally on these two sides. So 
we're going to take the expression 20 minus 2x and divide that in half for the length above and the length down below. So that leaves me with 10 minus x. For this length, and 10 minus x for this length. Next thing we need to do is to find an area function. So what I remember about finding the area of a rectangle is I multiply one side by another side. So my area function in terms of x is one side times the other side. In other words, the width times the length. So now we need to put that into our graphing calculator to find the absolute maximum. To, let's see what that looks like on my graph. I need to get a good visual here. And I need to adjust this window. to find my maximum. And it looks like my maximum is 5 comma 25. represents my maximum area. So it means when I have a width of 5 feet, my maximum area is 5 square feet. 